It's, it's Valentine's Day! Woo! Rolling, 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 rolling. Oh my god, we are so annoying. We're so annoying. We're the worst. I can't believe anyone listens to us. <laughs> we were just saying we're gonna get a cease and desist from Limp Biscuit. They're gonna be like, that's embarrassing. Can you guys not use our song? <laughs> Do you think Limp Biscuit's biscuit is hard yet? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Fred's cool as shit. Actually, I love him. Oh, really? He's you know so him. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Tommy are like really good friends. Is he single? Nope. What does he look He's like? He's already got. <laughs> he looks like Santa now. He grew oh. like a huge beard. <laughs> that might He pick. looks so different now from back in the day with the backwards red I hat. I don't even like remember that. what he looked like. I remember his outfit. Yeah. But I have no idea what his face looked like. I remember the back- backwards hat and yeah. then, like the Lee Pipes shorts. <laughs> like the shorts. I can see his ankles <laughs> yeah. we love an ankle in my mind's eye i can see his ankles <laughs> it was such a good time wasn't it the night the like early 2000s not for me <laughs> <laughs> all right well i'll just take that one alone <laughs> yeah. i was on house arrest <laughs> you were listening to limp biscuit in jail yeah. limp biscuits fred durst goes full cowboy for aftershock fest yes i saw that look look how this is what he looks like he's wearing a whole cowboy outfit he just likes fucking with people <laughs> that's his favorite thing to do he's like his favorite thing is to just fuck with people and just be deranged i mean why not why fucking not He's literally so funny. I mean, he's, yeah, he's Fred Durst. Nobody's really taking him seriously anyway. You know what's crazy, though? He's actually, like, a really good director. He directs movies, too. Did you know that? No, of course I didn't. Why Why would I? <laughs> I'm like, why didn't you read up on your Fred Durst <laughs> Wikipedia if before we... are going to do roller, 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 roller. <laughs> I expected you to know everything about this man, okay? Um, yeah, no, he's an amazing director. Oh, my God. Yeah. We have to talk about Drake's dick. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, more, no. You're like, I'm going to change something I know way more about. Yeah. Black dick. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Oh my god, I do know. Okay, so I saw this dick and I was like, "Holy shit!" But tell me what you sent it to you, right? You sent it to me, but it's crazy what your reaction was. Well, here's the thing: it is anyone who knows me knows that fucking Drake has been on my vision board for a decade. Just a Drake holding his cock taped on your fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I used to fight with my ex-husband about it. He's like, Drake would never fuck you. He's like, you're like 10 years too old for Drake. I was like, you're an asshole. Um, But I always just, I don't know why. I just think he's hot. I think he's funny. I think he's cool. I'm like, I just want to fuck him till he's dead. (laughs) And then I saw the dick. And it's my least favorite kind of dick. And I don't get what you mean by that. It's long as fuck. It's so long, it scares me. It's probably 12 or 13 inches long and it's skinny and it's here's the thing as women the g-spot is four and a half inches up so you really need need six inches we'd love eight you know but in girth no 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 oh just in length length. yeah yeah yeah. when it gets that long you don't need that much britney's like if it's not as thick as a coke can throw it in the trash that that is where it's more pleasurable is when it's thicker so his shit is very skinny and to be clear not like i ever got the chance to fuck drake (laughs) it's not like he's knocking my door down to come fuck but i now took it off my vision board i unpinned (laughs) i unpinned him from my vision board your pinterest is just one less pin i can't no she literally called me and she's like yeah i don't know i saw drake's deck highly disappointed after years of manifesting this like all that manifesting down the drain well you know what's crazy is i heard that he has head specialists like he hires head specialists like sex workers that specialize in head what yeah this is a thing yeah head specialists yeah sex workers that specialize in giving like bomb ass fucking head they're literally called head specialists well i just said that i just made that oh okay but i would imagine they have a name it sounded real imagine their business card (laughs) imagine i go there because i think it's like for like a psychiatrist and they just start like eating my pussy really good and i'm like well that's kind of solve all my problems (laughs) well well i'm better we figured it out Oh my god. No, so he hires head specialists and now I know why. Because a normal girl who does who has a gag reflex I know you don't have a gag reflex, but I got one. I used to not have one in college and it's back now because I'm fucking boring, but <laughs> we'll fix it. Yeah. <laughs> you could teach me your ways. But yeah, he hires head specialists and uh now I know why. Cause I mean, listen, I'm married to a guy who has a notoriously big dick and that shit scared me. Like Tommy's dick is big, but Drake's just looked like it was like, brrr. like it was like but literally is Tommy's like dick long and skinny. 
I mean, Tommy's skinny. So Tommy's, I mean, Tommy's dick is not, I don't, Tommy's dick is thicker than Drake's. Yeah. It, I will yeah, say exactly. that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know. The video was kind of far away. Like you can't really tell. Drake's dick is like that bottle right there. No, this is really thick. Okay. That's maybe it's at Tommy's. <laughs> Drake's dick's like this <laughs> red cord. Yeah. It's like this no. part of the mic. No, no, no. Yeah. Actually, I thought his dick looked really big and really like crazy. Like, I mean, I could never handle that. And Tommy has a big dick, but like, like I said, Tommy has more girth. Yeah. So I think like maybe that's the thing, you know? I don't know. It's weird though. That dick, di- that dick did scare me though. Did it? Yeah. Like I got kind of scared. I've definitely fucked that exact dick. Like, not Drake's, but that exact fucking type of dick. Like, the first black guy I fucked had the same dick. And I remember being like, Jesus, where are we putting all that? (laughs) You're like, wow. And it's really just (laughs) like... Let me just move my intestines around a little bit. That's the thing. You're just... It's just jamming your fucking guts. It doesn't look fun. No. No, it looks like I would just be like, can you just not go all the way in? Yeah. Can they do that? Just not go all the way in? Yeah, but then it's not great for them. It's not as fun for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. He needs, like, a girl that has, like, a like a fucking 50 foot torso <laughs> just all torso. cervix yeah he cervix the, his dick looks like the one of those dancing guys on the yes! car lot. <laughs> oh my god that's what it looks like i was trying to figure out what it looked like that's <laughs> fucking exactly looks like tube guy yes. the fucking red tube guy oh my god and as he was stroking it it looked like it like yes. could be like that stop <laughs> that's exactly what it looked like Brittany. Oh. perfect <laughs> I, would, I couldn't figure out custom inflatable tube man. Oh. That's what, whoa, whoa. and as he was stroking it, it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. like that's so fucking funny, dude. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys haven't seen it, I think it's like on Twitter, aka X or whatever, yeah. and everywhere else. If but you so, haven't seen it, DM me. I've got the video <laughs> saved to my phone. She'll charge you. Yeah. I'm dead. You start like leaking it. Yeah. You start charging people for. It. Wait. So how did it get out? Do we know? No. Obviously, the girl he sent it to. I wonder what girl. Probably several. That's probably why he oh. can't pinpoint it. <laughs> oh boy! And then I went to his page and I was like going to leave a comment that went said, <laughs> but he has his comments restricted. I know he's had them restricted for years. I've oh, tried he has? to like make a stink in there too. <laughs> We're all just trying to get our little yeah. fucking. He's like, no, 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 no. You don't have access to Drake. That's funny, dude. Wow. Yeah. No, I was very um. It was also like kind of red, or maybe it just looked burgundy from like. Were you wearing those heart glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brittany got us these. They don't look good on me because I'm a little cross-eyed, but they look cute on her, so I'm wearing them on my head. It's Valentine's Day episode and your anniversary. It's my guys. It's my five year wedding anniversary that's to Tommy. That's five years, dude. Time flies. We've been together for seven. We got together in um, early 2017. That was the exact timeline of my first marriage. Really? Married for five, together for seven, and then I was out. Great. Thanks, Britt. Thanks for that. Uh, you're like, and then it ended horribly. No, I'm just no, kidding. It's my, yeah, no, it's, it's my good. Fault. It's actually, yours ended really good. But no, I'm just like, it's so crazy. Like, you know, in all my other relationships, I think my longest relationship was like, four maybe three years and Mm -hmm. it's like usually after two years I get a feeling where I'm like "Mm, this isn't right or like not great right like you you don't have that sooner in the relationship no usually like I'll stick it out like I'm very committed you know that about me like I don't have like a wandering eye I'm not like a cheater so like I'll if I'm in something I'm like always trying to do the best that I can in that relationship and like usually after about Two years, I'll start to get, like, if it's something's wrong, you know? And usually it was, like, drugs or something with, like, my exes. Like, fucking, he's been snorting Kratom for three years. And I'm like, hey, I wonder, I guess now it's a problem. I don't know. Like, you know, fucking snorting pain pills or whatever. Um, I do have to say I saw the funniest rumor about me on Reddit. (gasps) What were you doing on Reddit? I don't know. I just randomly saw it and someone was like... Someone was like, oh, Brittany Furlong used to try to poison her ex-boyfriend, Ra- <laughs> Randall Kirk. And I'm like, what? Who's Randall Kirk? He's one of my, he was actually my ex-fiance that I oh. was with when I was on Vine. And I'm like, what? Like, we're still friends. Like, what the fuck? People literally, like, I just wonder what how bored people are to just make things up. Right. Like, they literally must be just, like, trying to practice, like, for, like, Wattpad or whatever the fan fiction shit. <laughs> They're probably just trying to write, like, novels, and they just make, literally make stuff up. 
Oh my god, you guys, I'm so excited for our first sponsor. Our first sponsor! Yay! We love you, Oak Essentials. Oak Essentials is luxury in a bottle. I literally just got it delivered a few days ago, and there's this moisture-rich balm that's like cocoa. What is it? What is it even? It has like cocoa um, cocoa butter in it, or and organic. And coconut oil, yeah. and it's... And it, and it helps create collagen production. It's amazing. This company was started in 2021, so not that long ago, by Jenny Kane. And it comes in this amazing box and the branding, the packaging. Everything is so, like, luxury looking. It's very high-end looking, but I feel like very reasonable price points. I mean, you can use it at any age. I think it's great. So the Moisture Rich Balm. It's the best. You can also use it on your face, and you literally don't have to wear makeup. Yeah. I'm wearing makeup today, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Need it. We Need love it. makeup. Yeah. But, yeah, but I have it on my skin, and I noticed when you put on other lotion your skin over time kind of dries out but this seems like because it's a balm it really seeps into your skin and yeah. like makes your skin feel very moisturized which I love because I do get really really dry dry skin especially living in California we have like super high heat so if you guys are interested in trying this product because you listen to our podcast and you're the absolute best you get 15% off your first order you're going to head to oakessentials.com and our promo code is BRIT that's B R. I-T-T, go ahead and treat yourself to this luxurious skincare and meaningful self-care because you deserve it. So that's 15% off your uh, first order at Oak Essentials, O-A-K-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S.com, promo code BRIT, B-R-I-T-T. Go ahead and treat yourself, you guys. You deserve it. Yay. Thanks for listening and thanks Oak Essentials for believing in us <laughs> it's like the parents we never had <laughs> and then of course i went down a wormhole someone else was like oh yeah britney's a big alcoholic too and like all this crazy Are shit you sure that they I was didn't have like, our wires crossed i mean that's me i'm a big alcoholic i was like i like literally am the one that like got my husband help my husband get sober like right. what are you talking about anyway so yeah what do you guys, i don't know how we got here but what are um, you guys doing to celebrate your anniversary so we were gonna go up to big sur oh my but we, we but you know he just had hand surgery so yeah. we were like we're just gonna chill i think yeah. but we're gonna do like little massages we're gonna have like a cute little day i mean we both are such homebodies we love just being at home together mm -hmm. you know we don't have to like do anything extravagant yeah it feels like every day is my anniversary is what i was trying to get to earlier it's like i'm never sick of him you know oh. like you know how sometimes people like over time you get like you're like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, I, like, love hanging out with him. Yeah. You know, and I still, like, want to fuck him after five years, which is crazy for me. Yeah. You know? Because I, I feel that's like... that's crazy for most women. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like our na na na, -na to, like, fuck is the first two years. Yeah. It's, like, crazy. You're fucking, like, rabbits. And then it goes down to, like once a week yeah <laughs> and then once a month <laughs> <laughs> and then once a year <laughs> i mean yeah. and that's normal in relationships if you're not fucking every day but like it's just it's like what i'm, I'm still attracted to him mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. which wasn't the thing in my past relationships yeah. i slowly was like this is dwindling this is yeah. not this is fading out this is not the vibe you know yeah and so that's how i know like this is probably like the realest definitely the realest thing i've ever had you know Aww. and fuck seven years geez the long like time. i was looking at nina my wiener dog my blonde wiener dog she was only two years old when i moved in with tommy wow and now she's nine yeah she's biggie's age she's a nine-year-old lady she hates biggie <laughs> She does hate Biggie, but to be fair, she hates herself. So yeah. it's not a big, it's an inside it's, job. It's not a biggie. It's not yeah. a biggie thing. She's got a lot of self work to yeah. do. But it was just so crazy last night. We were sitting on the couch together, and it was just like, God, I was sitting there. I'm like, Nina was only two years old when I moved in with you. She was a little baby. Now she's nine years old. You guys also moved in together after like two weeks, didn't you? Literally. <laughs> literally Unhinged. so people that think that love doesn't happen immediately are so wrong because it can happen fast and last like truly like we we started talking we, we hung out like a week later and then after we hung out he was texting me all the time and he was like come over come over come over come over and he lived in calabasas i lived in west hollywood and it was just like such a drive and I, I complained about it once. I was like, my God, could you like not live in like fucking East Japip? Like it's like yeah. it takes me fucking three years to get here every time. And he's like, just get rid of your place. Just move in. It's way easier after two weeks. Literal dream. Literal dream. It was just crazy. We moved in fast. We've we've just been together. We've been through so much. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is there are no rules for relationships. Like yeah. everyone thinks there's rules like you have to be together this long but or you have to date exclusively this long before your boyfriend and girlfriend. You have to be boyfriend and girlfriend for this long before you're engaged. You have to be engaged this long before you're married. It's like, no, none of that applies. You do it at your own pace. And like whatever feels right, just follow your intuition. If it's the right person, it works. Like Chris and I were the same way. He literally ended his first marriage and we started dating two weeks later wouldn't recommend um, <laughs> that what that was fraught with some issues but but we started dating two weeks later we dated for two years before we got married wow. and that was it we got yeah. and then we got married and we were together for five and it was a great marriage like i also think removing the stigma from divorce would be a great idea for society because like you can have a wonderful marriage that ends because people are no longer in the same place mm. you know that they were at the beginning it's like you either grow together or you don't but like i just think i don't know there's just no rules i remember then too chris was like you know all these people are telling me i'm like dating too soon i'm getting married again too soon i'm this too soon i'm that too soon it's like no there's no such thing just do your own thing and fuck what everyone has to say about it yeah was chris's exes like involved at all or like trying to talk to him still after that since it was so soon or no yeah but she had an affair and then she got pregnant with the other guy's baby like literally a week after she moved out so his interest in speaking to her was zero wow you know um and I also made him change his phone number. I was incredibly jealous and I was incredibly unrestful about his first marriage because it did just end. And so I was like, are you sure you're over this person? It feels impossible that you could be over this person. And, you know, I don't think he was fully over it when we first started dating. I think it took time for him to get over it. And then yeah. once, but he never reached out to her. He never, he wouldn't talk to her. He wouldn't give her the time of day. He wouldn't even like I remember one time they had to like sign the divorce papers and she started like crying and he's like, why the fuck are you crying? And then she's like, can you give me a hug? And he was like, no. And Were you there? No, he oh. like told me about it. And I was just like, damn, that's savage. But like, you know, he, he got over her eventually. Now he's literally zero interest in that person. He seems like such a level headed person from what you tell me like it's so crazy like you guys still have like maintained a friendship and I think that's so cool but the way he roasts you can you please tell oh, everyone my God. like he's so funny he is first of all the funniest person I've ever met in my entire life like he's so funny like I was going through so I have this thing in my uh, phone which is like joke starters and I was going through it the other day and so much of it was just things he said to me over the years that I was like God this man is so funny where does he get this shit from but yesterday so yesterday I I got Biggie back and every time we swap the dog we usually try and grab coffee and like catch up and in my head I made up this story that he was mad at me because I talked about ARMY on the podcast so I was like he's embarrassed he's mad whatever whatever and I was like are you mad at me because of the ARMY stuff and he was like what are you talking about and I was like are you mad at me because I talked about ARMY on my podcast and he's like I didn't even know you talked about Army on your podcast. And he's like, newsflash, you're my ex-wife. It's like the world does not revolve around you anymore. He's like, I don't even listen to your podcast. Yeah. I don't even look at your Instagram page. Literally, he has told me in the past, he has me like muted. Oh. <laughs> And you're like, why are you so obsessed with me? Yeah. Oh my God, sorry if I hurt your feelings. Yeah. He's like not even paying it's attention. Like, we've been divorced for like a year and a half. You really should get over it. He's like, bitch, I am not paying attention to you at all. I was like, that's somehow more hurtful. <laughs> but then I told him, we started talking about the army thing. And I told him, I was like, yeah, now like it's pretty crazy. Like nine girls have like slid in my DMs being like, I was dating him at the same time. Like sending screenshots, sending pictures of bite marks, like sending all this crazy shit. And I was telling him that and when I stopped talking, talking he was like are you surprised he's like are you he's like i'm surprised it was only nine he's, yeah. like, he's like you dated the only guy bad enough to have two fucking documentaries about it <laughs> yeah and i was saying to him i was like i thought he turned over a new leaf you know i thought <laughs> i thought he turned over a new leaf he's like a new leaf he's like that man is a dead christmas tree on the curb oh my god <laughs> turned over a new leaf we don't have seasons in california yeah. i can't he was just like you're a dumb bitch but i'm not paying attention to anything you're doing online and Ooh, i was wow. like love that for us was that hurtful no okay, no no, okay. no i love that i okay. would rather that he's because so funny though because it's like you think it's gonna be so emotional and he's just like 
what are you talking about yeah he's like <laughs> like i could give a fuck he's literally had a girlfriend for a year and a half at this point you yeah know? so it's like i mean talk about leaving a marriage oh, wait, tell him what you said were you like can i meet her oh my god yeah i asked him i'm like how's she doing can i meet her and he's like no <laughs> never you can never fucking meet her i was like i will meet her that is so funny i was like why can't we be friends i was telling her that i was talking to a comic the other day who's still really good friends with his ex-wife and like the new wife and the ex-wife are friends and i was like why not why can't we how do that? are they friends just they married the same person if that person is friends with them then wait 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 his ex-wife that was before you no 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 i'm i was telling chris that i was talking to a comedian the other day who is really close with his ex-wife oh. and then his ex-wife oh. and the new wife are, are now friends, friends. Yeah, so yeah, i was yeah. like giving that as an example well, yeah, like me and heather like i love heather yeah tommy's ex-wife yeah. like i love her like i've never met my tay um i've met another fiance who i don't like she was very mean about tommy and then um yeah but heather's like the coolest one she's just so funny and she'll like roast tommy she'll like make fun of him like she's so fucking funny dude and i've like i've said like i've tried to be nice to the other ones but there's just like too much weirdness i think because they still are like in love with him so it's like very hard it makes it very you're like okay never mind you're just trying to get rid of me yeah <laughs> you you just want me dead it's cool <laughs> you just want me out of the picture i get it okay bye <laughs> we're not gonna be friends i yeah. get it um yeah anyway so. but yeah i tried to be nice to everyone too i mean whatever i'm sure at some point you'll probably meet her i mean you guys are still so friendly it's like who knows i should just dm her and be like hey girl no <laughs> he would be Chris so would mad kill. he would be so mad no i'm just kidding i'm just grateful for the friendship i have with him and i'll just leave it at that i, I don't want to be a that. fucking menace i love that so yeah. we talk what are we talking we're talking about we're talking we're about doing breakup, breakup wars, wars today, wars today. Oh, and i feel like we really need to get God. into it because there are so many bad breakup wars there are what, so many what was your worst breakup my worst breakup was obviously my divorce, but <laughs> other than that, the only relationship I ever had besides that was this guy I dated my senior year. Okay, it's so layered, so like buckle up, yeah. but I dated him my senior year going into my freshman year of college. We mm-hmm. went to high school together, and I remember it was like a really tumultuous summer for me. It was when I found out my mom stole my college fund because I thought I was supposed to go, I was going to go to ASU. My mom stole my college funds. I had to like rejigger my whole plan. And um, I ended up going to the University of Milwaukee. And what happened is I started dating this guy. We'll call him Mike. And his family was like very supportive of me during this time. Like they were very just like sweet with me. Like his mom kind of took on the role of mom for me because she knew mine was being a dumpster fire. And then his dad was also very sweet, but his stepdad was always weird to me. Like, he always would just, like, make weird digs at Mike, like, the guy I was dating. He's like, Mm. this guy's fucking gay. Like, why are you even dating him? In front of him? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. He was, like, really strange, and I didn't understand. I didn't understand why. And then I ended up because I had to go to the University of Milwaukee I ended up going there with this girl named Brie um we were roommates that's her real name I want her to know that I fucking know this so Brie was dating this guy Jake who went to ASU Mm -hmm. and Jake and I had hooked up before Brie and Jake started dating and then I was dating Mike so Brie's dating Jake I'm dating Mike we're living together And Brie started doing, like, really crazy shit. Like, she started, like, sweeping the floor of the apartment and putting, like, the dustpan, the dirt from the dustpan in my bed. What? Yes. Like, Are you fucking kidding me? Like, psychotic shit. She had this girl, this other girl come over and she, like, looked at some of my stuff and said that I stole some of it. So then they confronted me and said that I stole it. And I was, like, literally... They said I stole it from her house. It was like this girl that threw parties and they're like, you stole this. This is mine. It was like hair product that my mom had given me. And I was like, this is like really unhinged. And in that time, my mom came back into my life and because she found out I was going to University of Milwaukee, which was a bad school. Yeah. And uh, she got me into Marquette. So she's like, you're not going here. This is like not good for you. And Mike and I had broken up like he called me. 
he literally just like called me on the phone and was like this isn't working i'm breaking up with you and yeah. i was like okay so we break up i go to marquette time goes by brie and jake break up and then it's summer again all of these pieces are going to make sense soon <laughs> so then it's summer again i got drunk and i hooked up with jake oh. and brie went fucking orbital like she already hated you she already hated me and she like took down like all my friends one by one like got them all to turn on me and i was in a really like bad place because i felt bad like i shouldn't have fucked jake you know what i mean like they were dating it's like i shouldn't but you had fucked jake first before before she was even dating him so that's like a lot yeah i mean not to say like whatever but no so she wasn't like your best friend or anything no she sounds like your enemy yeah it gets crazier okay so she fucking like takes me out at the fucking knees and destroys like my friend circle and like had everyone turn on me and i was like you know what i did fuck up i shouldn't have done that after they dated whatever whatever so then she shouldn't have dated him after Listen, you, you fucked him. It gets worse. Okay, okay. Anyway, Mike comes back around and we start hanging out again. His stepdad is still being fucking weirdly passive aggressive, and we get back together. And he's like, the, literally the night we got back together, he's like, I have to tell you something because I just want to be honest with you. He's like, I was fucking Brie the entire time we were dating. <laughs> I wish I could drop this. <laughs> what i was like so she hated you because she liked mike and you guys were together and he but he was fucking her i don't know why she hated me i don't know if she hated me because i fucked jake first and like that was her revenge was to fuck mike while i was dating him but it was like my head fell off my shoulders and rolled down the fucking hill i was like you've got to be fucking kidding me this bitch turned my life upside down because i fucked her ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend, after not they current broke boyfriend. Up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just like, oh, okay. So then I got back together with him, but then I kind of fucking hated him. I do could not I mean? do that. I literally, because it was like, do that. he tricked me. He was like, I want to get back together with you. You're my girl, da, 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 da. And then I was like, okay, yeah. And then when we were back together, he told me, he's like, I have to tell you this because I want to be honest. And I was like, oh, okay. But I kind of was still like a people pleaser and not strong enough to dump him on my own. And then... So we get back together and I go to see him because he goes to college an hour north of me and I go to visit him for Halloween, which was the weekend. So his birthday was early November. So it ended up being like Halloween weekend and his birthday weekend. And I go to see him and I get there and I'm there for a day and he leaves. He's like, I'm going to Madison, which was like a huge party school. And I was like, "Okay, cool, because I had other friends at the school he went to. I could just stay there. And then I see on Facebook that fucking Brie is in Madison. And I was like, you have got to be fucking kidding me. Again? Yes. So then he gets back that Sunday or whatever was his birthday dinner. We go to Red Robin with his family, his mom and his stepdad. And we go to the dinner. He's being like very strange to me. I get in the car because his mom was driving me back down to my school, my dorm where I lived. Right when I get in the car, he texts me. This isn't working. I need to break After up After the you. Red Robin dinner? <laughs> red Robin, Red Robin. What's the Red Robin slogan? It's like fa- family matters or some shit like that. Like, wow. So how awkward was the fucking Red Robin dinner? Well, the Red Robin, he didn't dump me until after. I know, but like you could tell yeah, when no, you were was, eating your peas. Yeah. That, like, <laughs> something's it was, amiss. It wasn't good. I mean. <laughs> oh, my God. So then we break up again. I told his mom because she's like, I'll see you again soon. I was like, you won't. No, you won't. You'll never see me again. <laughs> yeah. You're like, your son just texted me. Pull this car over. <laughs> you just put both of you into a, rav- a ravine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to break up with me. Say bye to your mom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just fucking psycho shit. I uh, can't. OK, so we break up in November. And then I worked at this place called Flannery's, which was a restaurant downtown restaurant slash bar downtown. His stepdad was a beer rep for Guinness. Uh-huh. And he comes in on St. Patrick's Day hammered. And he's like, I never knew why you dated that kid. Like, he's so fucking gay. He's like, (laughs) let me show you what a real man is. And I was like, what? And he's like, I've wanted to fuck you, like, since I laid eyes on you. And I was like, is he still married to the mom? Yes. I'm like, well, when you laid eyes on me, (laughs) I was was 16. 16. (laughs) 
And I'm like, Whoa. okay, he's just drunk, whatever. And I had a flip phone at the time. And it, <laughs> do, 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 do. It's not even real. Do, do, do. <laughs> it's a Barbie phone. Hello. The fucking but- the buttons are hearts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling the police. 911. <laughs> Oops, sorry. This is actually lip gloss. <laughs> So I had a flip phone. It fell in the trash. Booze got spilled on it. It's broken. So the screen is completely broken. I can't see anything. No text, whatever. If anyone was calling, I could hear it ring, but I yeah. didn't. Nothing else. So I wake up the next morning and I'm like, surely he's going to drop that. He calls me and I answer and I'm like, I don't know who it is. And I'm like, hello. And he's like, it's me. Like, Who's me? I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, I was really chalking that up to like a drunk mistake like please don't call me again or i will tell your wife wow and was he like, ugly too yeah i mean he's just like a big meathead like yeah he's a, he was a fucking dad you know what i mean yeah so um i he's like she's gone all weekend like <gasps> i like i'll come down i'll buy you a new phone he's like i meant every word i said and i was like oh. <laughs> you're like I'm seven. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that, that. I'm just a little baby. <laughs> Leave me alone. I was truly disturbed. I was that like, is scary. This is fucked up. That is scary. So, um, <clears throat> I can't believe it. I wonder if the mic ever knew your ex. Like I told a- him. <gasps> I, I told him. I didn't talk to him for years, and I got coked out of my mind at a friend's wedding that he was at. And I was like, your stepdad tried to fuck me. And he was like, shattered. He was destroyed. But I will say. Is it say, still his stepdad now? Yep. Yeah, and I will say the ultimate karma of all of this is he would drag Mike for being gay and whatever, whatever. The kid that he had who was like four at the time, sweetest little kid, turned out gay. Well, there you go. And I was like, well. That's what happens. Yeah. Right? So it was like, that was a lot of layers, but that was the, it was the most fucked up. Like it kept getting worse somehow. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I don't need another relationship. <laughs> Wait, so is Mike with Brie now? No, Mike is, he's been married for like 11 years to so someone else. So he married else. someone else. Yeah. So Brie, what's up with Brie? Do we know? No fucking clue. But I will say when I had to do my amends for AA, I had to reach out to her and do an amends for hooking up with Jake. And I was, uh, to my sponsor, I was like, can I? But wait, she wasn't with him anymore. No, so why I know. Did you have but it's to like girl code. You don't fuck the ex. We were just talking but about this she, the other but day. But he was your ex first. He wasn't my ex. I fucked him once or twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, he All wasn't right. like I get my it. ex. All yeah. right. Well, that yeah. was really nice of you. So, I, but I said to my sponsor, I was like, "Can I tell her that I know she fucked Mike?" And she's like, "No." She's like, "That negates the whole amends." And I was like, "Okay." So I'm like, "Sorry." Blah, 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 blah. She's like, "Maybe I overreacted a little." I was like, "You fucked Mike. You were fucking Mike while we did lived you say together." It? No, I didn't. Fuck, but I would Brittany, you have a lot of self-control. I know. I just hate when people try to like bend the truth. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. No. We're going to be truthful here. Yeah. Yeah. I've had to deal with a lot of bending of the truth, as you know, in my current life of people putting out things and being like, no, I'm so nice and sweet. No, you're not. (laughs) No, you are not. No, bitch. But anyway, I got to keep my mouth shut about that. Mm -hmm. Um, That's crazy, Brittany. What's your worst breakup? I need a piece of chocolate. I'm getting a little blood sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go into this fucking show. Sorry, guys. I get a little. I get a little. Sorry, I get a little dizzy you sometimes. Get a little dizzy. <laughs> I get, whoa. <laughs> I get whoa. a little. Get a little dizzy sometimes. Um. Okay, so. I was like at the height of my success with like Vine and I was like doing so great in my life and I was single and I, had, you know, Randall and I had split up. And I still, I still think Randall's great. Like Randall and I are still friends. He's married to a woman in Prague. Like so happy for him. You know, it was all fine. It wasn't like any negative or bad vibes, right? So I was single, and this guy was really interested in me, and he was a successful director, uh, or you know, whatever he as he was becoming successful and he was pursuing me and he kept texting me and like I'd met him at the Justin Bieber roast and he came up to me and was like oh I like love your stuff whatever he he's like kind of known in the comedy community whatever and um I just wasn't interested in him because physically was not my type yeah, you know he what looks I mean like a fucking toad yeah so um I was definitely like not interested physically but he was so sweet like he was just texting me every day and you know he really like got to me emotionally first you know how guys do that where they you know sometimes they'll just keep I mean and they, they love the chase because they can tell when you're not into them right because mm-hmm. I wasn't and so he like just do 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 he just love bomb me basically yeah. you know which and, by the way I love a love bomb every once in a while 
Well, that's like the fucked up thing is yeah. that I, people like us were like, we're like, this is normal. Like, yeah. I am this lovable. Yeah. I am this lovable right away. Yeah. Like, I am this hot. Like, yeah. I am this amazing. Like, yeah. The, the most unbelievable thing would be if you didn't love me. Yeah, this yeah, much. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you didn't like worship the ground I walk on immediately, yeah. then something's off. Yeah. Um, so he was just amazing. And he was like. I can't give out too many, I guess I can't, well, I guess I could, but because everyone, I feel like they would know if they Googled it. But anyway, so he was like Join shooting. The club, put him in the bright. I want to. <laughs> he was shooting a movie in another place and he literally was like sending me, getting me stuff from there, like having dresses made and like having all this like amazing gifts sent to me and like just really just going for it, right? So then when he finally comes back, we start hanging out and I fall for him because I'm like, you know, honestly, maybe it's about the nice guy. Maybe it's not about like the hottest guy. Maybe it's about the guy who is like genuinely a good person, a good person that we think, you know, and like connecting with their soul. Literally, as soon as I start to like him back, he does like the flipsies. Oh, yeah. And the, he starts the G to. Unit, as we call yeah, it. he starts to slowly, like, I can tell, be like less interested in me, but also like not letting me go in a sense where like I started getting very confused, where, you know, we were hooking up all the time, having sex. We were a couple, I thought, you know, like we said we were a couple. He was taking me to events and everything like that. But then I started like getting suspicious about cheating because I just started getting a feeling I was like something's like not right you know what I mean and so then the relationship was like starting to I could tell like I could feel it was like starting to deteriorate and you know um he had a thing for hookers Mm -hmm. like he like he would call hookers he had like a girl that he would call all the time from where he grew up in the middle middle America and I followed her on Snapchat and then um, he had the girls just kind of, he just knew who to call. He's like, I have a booker out of New York and he would call hookers and that was a thing. And I, that should have been a really, I should, that should have been it for me. I should have been like, okay, like now that I know this, like about this person, I should be done. Right. Yeah. And, but I feel like, sorry to interrupt. I feel like that gut feeling, like yeah. the second you get that gut feeling is when you should run. Because I feel like as women, we wait for evidence yeah. and like to get like hard evidence. But yeah. it's like, no, all you need is the gut. When the gut is like, this is wrong. Fucking bolt. Yeah. Like, I wish we, I wish we could do that. So then, like, I was like, okay. And I was trying to be, like, everything that he wanted because I wanted him to love me the same way he did in the beginning of the relationship. And so I was like, yeah, like, we can have – we can do that together with hookers. Yeah, like, we can, you know – and I am i don't know mean to call hookers. I think that's derogatory sex workers or whatever. Um, so – we did that together but that still wasn't enough like I noticed he was still like very distant from compared to like what we started as and so obviously I was like I need evidence right and my my evidence should have been that then he went away to shoot another movie and he like barely talked to me like he would like have sex with me and be like I love you like see you when I get back or whatever and then he'd be gone and just like wouldn't respond for hours and he'd be like sorry was shooting all day so busy blah 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 and meanwhile I would like look at his Instagram following and he'd be like adding all these girls and then I would go to his tagged photos and he'd be at the club with girls and I'm just sitting at home like what like we're like we're a couple like I'm so confused why this is happening and he would just every day new girls new girls new girls adding girls girls that were his PAs like all this shit so I was like I I need like the solid proof right mm-hmm. uh, as if the pictures of him at the club right. with the girls wasn't enough him in these tagged photos and shit and I'd be like what the fuck is this like why are you at a club with a bunch of fucking girls like this is so weird but you haven't like don't have time to text me back like I'm so confused right right so we would do this like back and forth where I would stop talking to him. Then I'd be like, we're done, you know, and then he'd come back from shooting and he'd be like, no, I love you so much, whatever. So it was just this really horrible, torturous thing for me because every time I got contacted by him, it was like a hit of dopamine. And I was so like, oh, my God, like he does really love me or, you know, whatever. So eventually I was like staying over at his house one night. He was leaving to go to another movie and he left his old phone. And I fucking booted that shit up and I just found everything. Like, everything. 
And I mean, this isn't even the worst of it. So it was like him messaging his PA being like, I want to cuddle and watch movies with you. Like, you're so beautiful. Uh. A stunt girl, like everybody, like just multiple messages on Instagram to, to girls while we're together. Even in the beginning when he was love bombing me. Oh my God. It's like the nerve. He looked like a piece of bologna with eyes. It's, like, it's just like, it was just crazy. And I was like, then I like, but at the time, like now that I'm looking at it, I should have just been like, oh, this person is a sex and love addict like this isn't even about me but I was so destroyed I fucking started texting in the conversation he had a private conversation on Twitter with one of the girls and I was like hi this is his girlfriend love that love this whole conversation blah 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 blah. and then he fucking deactivated his old phone and then he sent me flowers saying he was sorry like Girl, this man put me through so fucking much. Okay, but the last, the straw that broke the camel's back was like, I got back with him for like the fifth time. And this was like only in the span of like three years too. Like this was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I just became addicted to like, this is so unhealthy. And I was so sick. Like I couldn't eat. Mm -hmm. I, I got really skinny because I was so depressed. And I was so, it was like I was associating my worth with, him you know Mm -hmm. what I mean like I thought oh if I'm good like if I'm not good enough for him I'm not good enough for anybody you know what I mean and so I kept every time like I almost had to win I had to prove that like you know whatever I mean we even went and looked at houses together this is like not like we were you know serious and so then it's Thanksgiving and I was like what are we doing because we're a couple right like what are we doing for Thanksgiving and he's like oh I'm just gonna go see my dad and have some family time and I was like okay and he and then he's I was like okay well then I hit up my best friend and I was like I guess we'll just go on a vacation you Mm -hmm. know and she was like yeah let's go to Hawaii so we go to Hawaii but the whole time I had fucking added his escorts on Snapchat I've added them on Instagram I found out who they were over the years right and I didn't say anything to him but I fucking added them so I could watch like a psycho so the whole time I'm supposed to be enjoying myself in Hawaii I'm like watching because I'm like waiting because I have a feeling that this is not him just going to see his dad right Lo and behold, on Snapchat, boom, there he is. And he had like a scar that I recognized. And he's in a fucking Snapchat video with chicks naked, like dropping money on them. And they're, they're naked in the hotel room. He's, I see People his put friend. That on Snapchat? His, his face wasn't in it, but it was the girl, the escort. The yeah. The naked girl was on Snapchat naked. She was like, you know posing in the mirror and stuff covering you know like you could see and then like the money and like then his friend was in the background and I fucking lost my mind like I couldn't take one more thing I was like this is fucking insane and I paid all this money for my friend and I to go to Hawaii and like have a nice trip meanwhile he's spending all this money on escorts Mm -hmm. and I'm like you just ruined my fucking vacation like so then how did you let him know I fucking screamed at him. I called him and I was like, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. And I was like, he's like, you're forgetting like what we have and who we are. And I'm like, whatever. It was just so horrible. And I was so hurt and I was so broken. It was just so many times of betrayal that I literally like lost my mind. Like I literally lost my mind. I just saw red. And then I started talking to the girls and they started sending me pictures and then they were sending me info. And I was like, oh my God, like, they were communicating with me. He had a girl in um, in Vietnam. He had a girl in, you know, where he was from. Like, I don't want to give it too much away, but he had girls everywhere. And I became friends with one of them. I started talking to her and she was like telling me everything. And I was just so devastated. It was just really horrible. And then, you know, um, I was like, you like need to reimburse me for my trip that you ruined. If you have no problem paying all these as escorts, you need to reimburse me for my trip. And then he put out an article on saying that I blackmailed him because I asked him to reimburse me for my trip because he fucking cheated on me with escorts. And I'm like, you can pay the escorts and ruin my vacation, but you're not going to fucking pay for my trip that you ruined being a fucking piece of shit for the millionth time like it was so horrible Brittany like it was really horrible and then at one point like I I was like packing stuff up at um our old house with Tommy and I found something of his it was like a old like record or something like that 
And like I'm like now I'm in such a different place, you know, obviously. And so I was like, you know, I should send this to him because this was like a record that was like signed by someone that he really cared about and whatever. And like, I don't know why I did this, but I did. I sent it to him and then he texted me and was like, hope you're well. Like, thanks for getting that to me, whatever. I sent it to his friend. I didn't even send it to him. Mm -hmm. And I was nice, even though I probably shouldn't have been. And then it was like, he literally tried to spin everything on me and blame me and be like, you know, you ruined my life and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I ruined your life. Like, After it, you sent him the record? Yeah, he because he was you? like, you know, I haven't, things haven't been the same since, you know. It was just like horrible, the whole thing. Like, it yeah. was really, truly like... You know, it was really, truly just a horrible thing. And I just, like, was like, how am I getting blamed for something when someone did so much damage, like, to me emotionally? It was just so insane. It was honestly the worst thing. And then the fact that I think he still sees himself as a victim somehow when he was... Well, I feel like that's, like, any addict who is not working a program and can't take accountability. Like, he obviously doesn't, hasn't even acknowledged that he's a sex and love addict and it ruined his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like... I Instead, feel like he just rather blame me because he's, like, God forbid I tell people that, like, what he's done to me, you right. know? And he sounds like a full-blown narcissist. So yeah. never in the history of a narcissist has anyone been like... I'm accountable for my mistakes and my life is the way it is because of me. Yeah. They always blame people around them. They deflect. They don't take blame for anything. So that's, that's horrible. Yeah. I mean, I like hope for his sake that he's, you know, gotten help and therapy and all that because, I mean, you just don't treat people that way. It's like insane. I hope he rots in hell. I can't. <laughs> no, but then I ended up finding out later, like when the Me Too thing happened, someone Me Too'd him like very lightly, but they did. And like it didn't blow up, but he, because he's not famous enough, but right. like someone did Me Too him. So I was like, I mean, anyway, so that was like the worst thing that ever happened to me just because it made me so physically sick and I got so skinny. I got so unwell mentally. And it's just weird to like be in a relationship with someone now who loves me for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like is so transparent and is like, we share a computer. We don't have any secrets. We don't have any like any hidden anything. Like we share everything. So it's like, yeah. it's so different. And so like girls, if you are in a relationship with a man who is not valuing you, who is not treating you right get the fuck out of there don't waste any more time the fact that i wasted three years of my life is crazy so yeah, yeah that was horrible okay well it's time for <laughs> us to get into your worst your breakup worst there were ours those were like oddly therapeutic i'm like i feel like neither well i've never talked about that one publicly or ever because i kind of just like pushed it down and was hoping it would turn into ass cancer <laughs> it's like you know Oh my god! Uh, Brittany's eating more chocolate because Sorry, she's low, her, blood, low blood sugar. Yeah, her sugar is bottoming out. Okay, so first one is Valentine's Day gift. I had a pretty nasty accident the week of Valentine's Day, 2020. I was very sick for like a week and still went to work every day. Probably patient zero for COVID. Oopsies! Oh my god! <laughs> I had my ex boyfriend over. After dumping him on Christmas Day 2019. Savage. Shit. Imagine Christmas. What'd you get me? <laughs> Merry Christmas. A box. You an empty suck. box. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Um, he brought me pink roses and everything. Proceeded to shake me up like a Pepsi can. So this is fast forward. We're on Valentine's Day, right? If you know what I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying. Well, he was like, they were banging. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she wasn't feeling good oh, okay okay so we fell asleep fully spooning as close as they can be as close as can be in our undies and then i woke up in the middle of the night with both of us covered belly button to knees and hot sick girl diarrhea oh, <gasps> girl how did you not what? wake up shitting Literally. like that would wake me up immediately <laughs> I wake up when I have to pee. How do you not wake up before you shit? <laughs> and blow your asshole out. <laughs> this guy still dead asleep. No way. Uh, for like a full three minutes while I panic. It was awful. I felt terrible and mortified. Everything you can imagine. He wakes up wide eyed in shock. But recovered super fast and was super sweet about it. Aw. He ended up getting sick a few days later. LOL. Poor guy gets dumped on Christmas and then pooped on for Valentine's Day. 
And it sounds Damn. like she still didn't take him back. It sounds like she just... He wakes up wide-eyed. Dude, I would have been screaming. Yeah. Like, what? I would have like, called the fucking police. Like, if you shit fuck. on me, I'm calling the cops. And how is he still into this chick? That's crazy. She dumps him on fucking Christmas and then she shits <laughs> on him? Like, fuck. You know what? Some guys really love a mean bitch. I think guys do. Yeah. I feel like guys like you when you don't like them yeah. a lot of the time. Except for Tommy. Tommy Except for Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. If yeah. I'm like mean to Tommy, he's like, why are you being mean to me? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I, do I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one's called the, anon- the ultimate booty call. When I was 16, I started dating a guy six years older than me. All the cops. He was my first ever boyfriend and my first... After about six months of dating, he broke up with me over the phone telling me I was too young for him. Yeah, oh, no now shit. she's too young for you? <laughs> After you bang her, now yeah, she's too young she's for you? She's been too young the whole time. For the next three years, he would show up drunk, banging on my bedroom window for midnight booty calls. Where's your parents? Right. Like, this guy would have gotten a shotgun right in the fucking face. This happened about three times a week. He oh would shoot this fucking yeah. 30-year-old man. Hey! Yeah, yeah Charlie would have sniped him dead. Move That's that like- fucking teddy bear out of the way i'm getting in um he would show up i'd sneak him in and we'd have sex and then he would break up with me again wow sounds like my ex um i'd cry he'd leave show up two days later sex and repeat wow he even moved two hours away to the same city that i moved to for college and continued this oh my god honey i'm so sorry uh, sweetheart this is horrible he's a very committed predator Ew, I hate this guy. For three fucking years, I thought he was the only person who would ever love me. Okay, I get that. I do get that. He gave me two STDs because I knew he was also sleeping with other women the same time, at the same time, but for three years, I let this prick use me for sex. Longest breakup ever. P.S. Now he's fat and bald. Karma. <laughs> Dude, that literally sounds like me and my ex. It's so crazy. I mean, this like... This is just your submission. Dead. I'm like, wow, that's her name's Brittany that's wow what a coincidence wow I'm so sorry girl I'm so fucking glad you're out of that shit dude like that's fucking that's a vicious cycle and it's really hard to get out of well it's really hard to get out of and especially when they get you that young yeah because then you're like you're mentally you just think nobody else is ever gonna love you yeah I still felt that way at like 28 but yeah yeah no I know but I'm just saying like psychologically it's much different when you're 16 yeah that's 16 and what was he 22 like that yeah that's insane we're sending you fucking a big hug on v-day girl you're way better okay off. black on black dot 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 gay sex <laughs> love that when i was in the closet i met this powerful business associate who was also in the closet we're both black which is an important detail because homophobia in the black community is still very prevalent oh wow he had me live with him and would tell people he was mentoring me and i was his roommate kind of make me made me look like his charity case <gasps> But really, he just had me go on coke runs for him. And in all other ways, he acted like my boyfriend. He took care of me. We were hooking up and he told me he loved me. He always told me that one day we would come out together and be able to love each other out loud. (laughs) That sounds gay just typing it, but I guess we were LOL. He would have a rotating door of quote unquote girlfriends and it would always and I would always get so jealous of them, but had to stay in my lane. Sometimes when I got really fucked up, I would tell his friends and his girlfriends that I was questioning my sexuality and he would always get mad at me the next day and tell me when I said said that it made our relationship look more suspicious. I was deeply in love with him and would do whatever he said. So I did my best to stay quiet. He finally met a girl he swore he was in love with and he had me move out she was really young 20 something and he was in his 50s he stopped returning my calls and i slipped deeper into my drug dependency and a few days after he missed my birthday he proposed to this girl Mm. i was devastated and coked up to the gills and i posted all over social media how manipulative and abusive he was i never outed his sexuality but anyone who saw the outburst knew i was a lover scorned Instead of reaching out to me directly, he called the police. He had me 51 would He had tried to say it was a psychotic break to discredit me and not lose his illustrious career. I got sober and he got married and now has a kid and I always feel so bad for that woman. She has no idea who she married. 
Wow. Springer, Springer, Dude, Springer. Dude, that's actually so crazy. It's so sad. Like, it's so wild to me that, like, these guys, like, they can have full on, you know, families. Homo- and- no, homosexual oh. relationships and then go and be like, no, I'm going to marry a girl now and then just discard their partner. Like, Right, but it's not to say that guy's going to marry a woman and then only fuck women. that woman Oh, now. yeah, no, he's totally going to yeah. cheat on her with dudes. Yeah, it's just going to be but someone it's like, else. This is so heartbreaking for this person. Like, that's yeah. fucking terrible. Like, it's just so terrible the way people treat people and they try to spin stuff. Well, yeah, to discredit, like, him outing this man as a bad yeah. person, as a psychotic break, it's like, no, you're a fucking psychopath, dude. This reminds me of, I can't say who it is because I don't know if he's come out, but there's a really famous rapper... Mm-hmm. Who is gay with a f- Lil Nas with X. someone <laughs> with, with someone? No, he's not out. Okay, I don't think who is gay with someone that we know who's a comedian, and I'm like, wow, like they had a full blown relationship. No one ever heard about it. And you, I think you might know who I'm talking about. I actually don't. Okay, I'm gonna tell you later. Okay. But anyway, it's just crazy to me because they had like a full blown relationship, and I'm like this person is like they they people don't know people just think this is just like a straight like rapper and he's not he's like had a full-blown relationship with one of my friends that's crazy it's so crazy i think it's interesting because like you think about how far gay rights have come in our lifetime in the last decade in particular like i remember when gay marriage became legal like so it's not that far in the past where it's like they were not treated equally by under law right and i think also under like the greater scope of the united states of america i think it's still very homophobic and i think you know especially like artists CEOs, you business feel like people. people are. I feel like Hollywood is so uh, accepting of gayness, and I feel like we almost celebrate it. I think we celebrate it on the surface, but I think deep down, I I think agents, managers, people tell you to you're going to get more business opportunities if you stay in the closet. And oh, I see that. Okay, yeah, because that would make sense why this person has not publicly. I know many people that are gay. Bisexual. I know many actors, performers, comedians that are gay. Yeah. And they stay in the closet because it is more widely marketable to be heterosexual still. Yeah, same. I do know some people personally that are really well known who are not straight. Yeah. But they have never said it. And then the second it gets like there's too many rumors buzzing about this person maybe being gay or whatever. They'll show up with a girlfriend. Exactly. (laughs) It's so true. It's like anytime there's a big celebrity debut of I a girlfriend, laugh. I'm like, tee hee hee. I too laugh. many people found out about you. I know. It in the and booty. it's like, obviously, guys, we don't out people on the podcast, so we're not going to tell you. Oh, my you. God, never. We're not going to no. tell you ever who we're talking no, about. No, no, no. But, no. you know, there just are a lot in this industry that are gay. Gay. And, and that's great. And that's fine. You know, yeah. who cares? I mean, I'm fucking bi. I can't talk. So it's like, I you mean, know, yeah. whatever. We both, you know. You you've hooked up with women. Obviously. I'm by too. Yeah. So well, I think actually it's interesting. I've been thinking about this a little more lately. There's a new category. You know, there's so many categories. Mm. There's one called heteroflexible that oh. I'm gravitating more to. Oh, what is that? Which mean? is that you're mostly heterosexual, yeah. but you are flexible to kind of anything. Did you know my first relationship was with a girl? What? Yeah. No. When you were like young, I was like it started when I was like seven. <gasps> Wow. Yeah, with my neighbor. Oh. It was just like my neighbor, my mom's friend's daughter. Yeah. We were like best friends. Aww. And she, I don't know what was happening at her home, maybe nothing, but she was very sexual. Mm-hmm. You were and too, weren't you? I was, I was too, but like she was more. Like she okay. was like, we'd watch like HBO Real Sex together and then we'd like dry hump each other and oh. like, but we were best friends. At and then we, age seven? Yeah, very young. And we would literally hook up like, every time we hung out for years and I was like it's my best friend and my girlfriend like it was like mm-hmm. kind of like weird like and I just didn't even like look at guys mm-hmm. for years because I was like oh I'm like feeling very and then she started dating guys mm-hmm. and I felt like very betrayed yeah because I was like That's wait and she's like I don't want to hook up anymore when I, when we were like 12 and I was like or 13 and I was like oh okay because we were like the same age and, yeah. and then she's like yeah I started you know, hooking up with guys and I really like it and da da da. And so she stopped hooking up with me and I was like, oh, Aww. okay. And then I was like really hurt. And then 
eventually next time you see her you just have a strap on you're like look what i found i can't (laughs) no but i was like so confused for so many years and no she's married now and has kids and like married to a guy and like well yeah it's really crazy i mean i don't even know if she was gay or just horny and i was just there but i literally thought i was gay because i was like oh i really like this and like i like Mm -hmm. her and like she's my best friend like it's fun like we're best friends and we hook up like it was the best but again you're so young the delusion I, so and you're, I mean seven is so young i can't yeah, even i was really i don't know that's why. really like, young. really young i was very horny i'm still very horny that's but very interesting i know it's weird boys get horny early but i know i feel I, like i have like maybe i have a lot of testosterone or something yeah. i have like pcos maybe like that has something to do with it i don't know maybe i'm like it's weird like i just was very horny very young yeah it's not like normal i don't think i don't know Okay. Unless I'm like a well. secretly little dude. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Anonymous email. That's one way to get her to move out. It's called, oh, hell, I tried breaking up with my ex and <laughs> she locked herself in the, because I feel like that's what he talks like. Oh, hell. Because it starts oh, with, hell. oh, hell. Oh, hell. I he's, tried like hell no, to get this bitch to move so, out. Oh, he's God. definitely <laughs> Southern. I got to talk like he's Southern. Oh, hell, I tried breaking up with my ex and she locked herself in the master bedroom. So I slept in the guest room. Well, 2 a.m. rolls around and my phone's going crazy with texts and calls and calling to check on. Then I'm calling to check on her because she was sending some crazy messages. I was like, I got to work in the morning. Listen, I got to work in the morning. I'm sure she just wants attention. So I finally decided to check on her, and she has the bedroom door blocked with a nightstand. So I'm yelling, hey, Bethany, open this (laughs) fucking door, bitch. And I'm threatening to call 911. (laughs) I get nothing back from her. So I call 911. They show up. They break the door down. They find her overdosed in the fucking tub. (laughs) They take her to the hospital. I call her friends and they tell me, let's get her moved out while she's in the hospital. So the next day we load up the U-Haul and guess who shows up straight from the hospital. She tells me, call the cops because I'm not leaving. Her friends boxed up all her things and was moving her shit out, but she refused to leave my house. Well, the cops talked her into leaving, and now she's out of my life. <laughs> well, Hot God, diggity dog. Well, goddamn. Well, I'm god just, fucking damn. I'm just imagining a bitch showing up like with the IV still in her I'm arm. I'm not leaving. <laughs> a hospital. Yeah, just a yeah. gown, just the ass out, just the fucking she's, no panties. Yeah, she's like the only person who can get rid of me is me. <laughs> If anyone's gonna take me out, it's gonna be me, motherfucker. That's so weird to me. A girl who like so she tries to kill herself. Obviously, like they're having relationship issues. Um No. She no, but no, but they tries to kill herself and then comes back and still wants to be with him. Wow. Yeah, bitches are fucking crazy. We are some of us bitches, are bitches be tripping, yeah. We do, we do sometimes. <laughs> we do sometimes, but sometimes guys, listen. Guys will talk shit and be like, oh, she's so crazy. What'd you do to her? Yeah, I want to know. Oh, hell, what'd you do? What'd you do to her? What'd you do to her? What'd you do to her, huh? I'm dead. Okay. Uh, My boyfriend went crazy after I cheated on him. (laughs) Well, With my ex. Well. (laughs) I'm also a guy, and my ex that I cheated on him was a huge whore. Anyway, he set my house on fire with the kid and cats inside. (laughs) They ended up fine, but geez. (laughs) This is like best submission of all time. holy shit also it is a gay man that will get to the point that quickly and then end it with they ended up fine but geez jesus, jesus calm you know, down peter you don't have to start my house on fire bro <laughs> with his kid and the cat inside that motherfucker should be in jail for real though oh my god okay well you guys we had so many more submissions but Brittany and i talk way too much we talk we way too shut much the fuck up. yeah we have to shut the fuck up Unless you guys like it, guys, leave a comment if you would rather hear more stories or more of our personal stories. We're not going to take advice. We don't take Uh, feedback well. All right. Well, (laughs) never mind then. (laughs) We do not take feedback well, and we're going to do what we want. Okay, guys, now we have a few minutes to get into bad advice. We're going to, this is a segment where you guys write to us and we give you our advice, which is obviously terrible. So it's called bad advice. Um, Nick, you can use his first name. Oh, shit. This is called Odd Flavors. I met this girl from a dating app at Starbucks. A dating app at... Oh, you met her at Starbucks from a dating app. Okay, I was like, (laughs) Starbucks Starbucks has a dating dating app? Oh, shit. (laughs) Guess who else likes a caramel frappuccino? Chris. (laughs) And he's got a huge dick. I'm dead. And he's a Virgo. (laughs) Yeah, and he's dead. Can you imagine? Starbucks probably would do that shit. Yeah. Okay. And it would probably be very successful. Yeah. 
And the only place you can meet up is Starbucks. Starbucks yeah. I can't. Okay. She's younger than me, college age, early 20s, artsy looking, slightly tatted Asian girl. She shows up wearing sunglasses, a hat, and some baggy clothes that don't quite match. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay, fucking fashionista. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like she partied way too hard the night before. She wants to take me back to her place to show me her apartment since she lives a block away in some nice luxury building. I figure, why not? What's the harm in that? The lobby looks pretty nice, almost has a hotel vibe to it. We take, we take the elevator up to her apartment nothing could have prepared me for what happened next dun, dun, dun. oh boy it was a studio apartment not that big with a nice view of the city and big windows but the apartment itself was a complete fucking mess like a landfill of random stuff scattered all over the place what's up hoarders weak old pizza boxes with crust and Ashtrays filled with ashes, dirty bongs on the table, piles of towels all over the bathroom floor. She said she was getting a master's degree in psychology as a foreign student and said she was from Taiwan and her parents were covering her expenses. I figured she was just coping with the stress of school and being away from home, so I tried to be understanding of that, even though the mess was really off-putting. I sit next to her on the pull-out couch slash bed that had some questionable stains on it oh god she starts to make out with me and something about it feels off the taste of her lips has an odd flavor that's mildly off-putting but i couldn't figure out what it was i excuse myself to go to the bathroom to rinse out my mouth and take a shit what okay the fuck that's weird is happening <laughs> like why are you taking a shit yeah. at this girl that you yeah I just because she has weird uh, tasting lips you don't take a shit after i poop i notice there's no hand soap and no toilet paper anywhere mm. oh god i improvised by using body wash from the shower as soap and a hopefully clean towel to wipe my hands. And then I wipe my ass. There was no alternative. Don't judge me. I'm dead. After I clean myself, I go back to her couch. I was debating leaving at this point, but my dick brain overruled my head brain as the nature of man. I get back to her couch and she starts to take off her clothes and there's bruises all over her. Oh my God. This bitch parties. I assume she just likes things rough and that's her style, but who knows? Then she starts to blow me. She's actually pretty good at it. Great tongue skills. This doesn't last long a minute into blowing me she spits out a big orange chunk onto my dick Ugh. at first i thought she threw up i stop her and say what's that are you okay she says yeah i'm fine i take a closer look and it's not actually throw up it's a piece of gauze ew ew then she says she just got her wisdom teeth out the day before so that's why her mouth tasted weird Ugh. at this point i'm thinking this is a health hazard considering considering all the other types of things that happened and i decide to bail i stop everything and tell you i stop everything and tell her you can't be doing this right after a surgery like that it's not safe you're supposed to wait at least a week did i overreact or did i handle it the right way bro there's so much weird shit with this story there's so much weird shit like first of all when he goes into her apartment and he cares that it's a mess never in the history of a guy getting his dick sucked have i ever heard about them caring if it's messy or not no in no, there. no tommy's told me he's gone over some girls apartments and it's literally so ravenously disgusting where there's like just shit everywhere like it's like hoarder shit where you're just like, like tommy's not liar though i feel like in when i was in college my fucking dorm room was like a post-apocalyptic apocalyptic forever 21 like, really oh my god it was such a but mess. i feel like when it's like dirty with like you know dirt and like pizza boxes well, yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit that's like that different. like that's like nasty yeah. and tommy said like some of the like hookers or not hookers i'm sorry porn stars he would hook up with they would have like, crazy nasty places and he Ugh. would like he was like i didn't even want to hook up with them because it was just like it there's like cat litter there's fucking Ew. pizza on the floor questionable stains on the rugs like just a mess you know yeah. like that's not a good sign i think of like good mental health you know when your place looks like that yeah but the crazier the bitch the better the fuck well Okay, Brittany. <laughs> I'm dead. This story. Your place boring. doesn't have to be a mess up. But anyway, so the fact that he literally went to her place though and then took a shit. Took a shit. That's so that, that weirded me out more than her place being dirty. But yeah, she should not be sucking his t his dick with just getting her wisdom teeth out. No, yeah, that's she's not Bro, making good life choices. Oh my god. Like dry sockets. They yeah. Dry sockets. <laughs> dry sockets. Oh my god, that's hilarious. 
Oh my god. Yeah, anyway, this episode's been really long. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakup worst episode and Valentine's Day. We got our little Valentine's Day. Little V-Day glasses. glasses. Happy Thanks Valentine's too. Day, you guys. It's not a real holiday, so if you're alone, don't sweat it. Hey, it's my anniversary. Well, th- okay, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I was trying to comfort people that are alone on Valentine's Day. I can't. I'm like, it's my anniversary. Everybody go wish us a happy anniversary. Guys, make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on all platforms. And make sure to submit your worst experiences and your bad advice to this is the worst pod at justmediahouse.com. Again, this is the worst pod at justmediahouse.com. We are so excited to see you again next week. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Thank you guys for listening to This is the Worst podcast powered by Just Media House. This is the Worst is hosted and executive produced by Brittany Furlan Lee and Brittany Schmidt. If you enjoyed our show, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Stay connected with us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Snapchat at This is the Worst Pod. Studio provided by Second Floor Studios, podcast and social artwork produced by The Forward Digital and Product Limited. Thank you to our post-production team at Creative Evolution Studios. Theme song to This Is The Worst podcast performed by Midnight Noise. This is the worst where we are going to make the best of the worst. Oh, we do that every episode. They're like, copyright, Limp Bizkit. They're like, uh, nope, we're sending you a cease and desist. Please Can stop. you not do that? Okay. We're ready. Roll, 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 roll. <laughs> roll, roll. Do you see it at the bottom? No, Mike. I think we might have scrolled past Mike, it. you can talk, you know. Mike, we love Mike. <laughs> Mike's our favorite. <laughs> Mike's a grown boy. Mike's just in the corner counting how much longer until this is over. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> fucking stop talking. Jesus Christ. Insecure about my normal penis. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like the red inflatable tube guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. Kiki, do you love me? <laughs>